Think about the last time that you were given some criticism that cut you to the core and made you question whether or not you even wanted to take photographs anymore. How's it, how's it guys? The world would have lost a hugely influential and talented photographer had that particular person taken criticism to heart. You may not be familiar with Eve Arnold, but she was one of the early members of Magnum, massively famous photographer. She was encouraged to go to a night class by her husband. And that night class was run by a picture editor for Harper's Bazaar called Alexei Brodovich. Now you may not be familiar with this name, but he was mentor to Urban Penn. He helped Richard Avedon. He was just, he was so influential. And he was running this night class. Eve put together some prints and went down to, in the hope of finding out more about photography. And Alexei is standing at the front of the class. He says, hello, has anybody brought some prints in? Now, Eve Arnold says, and the reason we know this is because she talks about this in this wonderful book, The Unretouched Woman, where she's in a misguided moment. You can see where this is going. She holds up her hand and she goes, I've got some images. And Alexei comes over and has a look at them. Hands them around the class and goes, what do you think? Now, this wasn't a class full of photographers who were learning about f-stops and shutter speeds. This was a class that was full of professionals who wanted to get jobs on Harper's Bazaar by being close to Alexei. So they kind of just ripped into these pictures. They were like, this is them, blah, 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 you know, all sorts of things. And Ivan was just being bombarded with all these people just saying, look, your pictures are not very good. And, and that cut, that hurts. I'm sure that you remember some time when somebody said something about one of your photographs that you were very proud about, that really just, it just ripped you. And it started digging into your mind and the same thing has happened to me in the past. So when Eve went home that night, you can imagine, oh, it's, it's in tears and think, I, I can't, no, this is, this is too much. However, as she's thinking this, she finds herself actually saying to the lady who works for them, are there any fashion shows up in Harlem that I could go and photograph? Because the next assignment was fashion. So the lady says, yes, you can go up to Harlem. So she goes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and do some pictures that would be good enough for these pros that Alexa and, and, and they will sort of go, this is the kind of thing I would like to see in Harper's Bazaar. So she goes off and photographing and everything's going wrong. The flash doesn't attach to the camera properly. It's just, it's a bit of a, she's having a bit of a mare. Goes home, prints the pictures, just goes, oh, what are all these? They're just, oh my God takes them off to the class. They're not the pictures that she wanted to show. They are pictures that she thinks are not very good. Lexi looks at them very briefly, puts them to the bottom of the pile. She's thinking, oh, here we go. He hates them and he's going to give the class a long enough time at the end of the lesson to really rip into them. So they go through and he comes up at the end of the class and he goes, Eve, you are not shooting any more assignments in this class. Oh, this is, what's, what's going on? Oh, no. From now on, you only shoot fashion. She was like, what? Is it? These have a raw and an intensity and a brilliance to them that is uniquely you. And this is the thing, I mean, how amazing is this? This is, this is like a massive person in, in photography saying, there's something here, this is awesome. I want you to work on this. I want you to develop this idea that you're going with because it's something that's different. What she was trying to do was to create images to please other people that would fit in with the crowd. But she had the bravery, even when those photographs didn't pan out, to bring the work anyway, to face the music, as it were. And that is the beginning of Eve Arnold's fantastic career. So you can imagine, if she had given in to that fear, hadn't been brave enough, then the world would have been denied 
Eve Arnold. And that is a crying shame. The reason that I take photographs, that you take photographs, is because the process is enjoyable. That we get, we have fun. When we make something, go, that's kind of cool. And it becomes even nicer when other people go, I really like what you do. But therein lies the problem, that we start chasing that little dopamine hit of other people saying, hey, that's pretty cool. So it's a common trap to fall into trying to chase fashions and fads in the hope that people will like our work. That is a completely natural reaction because we're making something personal, so it feels personal and we don't really want to have negative feedback because we feel, I know I feel this and you probably do, that when somebody says something about your images, that it's, they're kind of talking about you. So that's why it's scary to plow your own field, to go and try things out, to go away from the norm, to explore ideas that appeal to you. Recently, I was talking about sharpness in photography and I talked about soft focus. That was that effect from the 1970s. Now, you can imagine, if you explored something like that, if you did something like that now, a lot of narrow-minded people, I think it has to be said, might look at it and go, that's rubbish. And if you just kind of slapped on a filter and did your thing, then maybe they would be right. But if you worked at it, if you tried things like, if you experimented to, to take that basic of something that is unfashionable, that people heap scorn upon, and pursued it, even though people were sitting there going, oh, that's rubbish, Alex, what are you doing? That's kind of the junk. You might find something at the end of that rainbow. You might find that actually you discover something that people go, oh my God, that is amazing, because you've made something remarkable. To get the ball moving with this, I, I want you to just take some photographs that are purely for yourself, that you stop worrying about what other people are thinking, that you make a pact with yourself, that you don't care. Whatever people say, it doesn't. And in fact, just don't ask people's opinions about them. Right? Don't even show them if you don't want to. Just do them for yourself. For years, I never showed any photographs. I would, I would hide them back. Now, a lot of that, yes, is to do with the fact that I was scared. If you look at the early videos on this channel, they never feature any of my work whatsoever because I was petrified about putting my own work out there in front of people whom I couldn't hear them talking. And that all stemmed from an event that, that almost sabotaged my career in photography completely. I'd been taking some headshots for actors at the theatre where I worked and I'd given them the prints and what have you. They said, oh, thank you very much. You know, these are kind of cool. And then when they were out of earshot, although they thought they were out of earshot, I heard them talking to each other, saying that See, these were SH1T. That hurt me. That cut me deeply because it planted a seed in my head that I thought everybody behind my back was saying my work was rubbish. That even though to my face they were saying it was really good, it was kind of cool, which is that stokes that ego, that really I was just, I was like a fraud. And that plagued me for so long. And it, it upset me that I never got a chance to fulfill earlier potential with my photography, because that was like an albatross hanging around my neck, that whenever I thought about stuff, the negative things just boiled up inside me and stopped me from taking photographs. The reason that I create these videos on this channel is to inspire you, to help you find your love for photography and to express it in as many interesting ways as you possibly can. You are a unique photographer. You are the only person taking your kind of pictures. And to really fulfill yourself, you need to explore 
every avenue that you find interesting. It doesn't matter what other people say. I know this sounds like it's the same message over and over again, but we have had lifetimes of being told that we need to please the masses, that we need to conform to whatever rules we're, we're told. And I'm not talking about photographic rules, I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about, like rules of, of taste and aesthetic and popularity. The most exciting photographs that I've ever taken are the ones where I've kind of gone, I'm just going to try this out, whatever people others think, I don't care. Be that photographer who takes these ideas and just runs with them. There are so many people who are taking images that just do not sit well with them. And I really hope that you are not one of these people, that you aren't just chasing likes on your Facebook, Instagram, wherever these places are, or you're just trying to please one person at your local camera club. If people say they don't like your work, that's a positive. That means we're moving in the right direction. If it is warranted criticism, if people say, look, you know, the, the composition's a bit out, or this is a bit wrong, or the exposure, the dodging, the burning could be improved. That's positive criticism because they are helping you refine and enhance your vision. But if they sit there and go, do you know that white vignette? Oh my God, that is horrible. That is so not the thing that you should be doing because it's just, it's, it's ridiculous, it's so old fashioned. Then that's positive. I would sit there and you would, I would say, okay, cool. That means I'm starting to needle at somebody. If you are taking inspiration from other photographers, both past and present, whose work doesn't seem to fit with any sort of, modern, fashionable kind of, kind of stuff, then that's cool. That means there is a market for it. And if it appeals to you, then it's appealing to somebody else as well. Throughout all of this, when you create your images, that you may find that unbeknownst to you, somewhere out there, you are quite possibly somebody's favorite photographer. Now let that sink in for a little bit. We think about favorite photographers and often it's the, the big names that come out there, but I'm sure that if you have a website, if you have you know, a social media presence, prints up in an exhibition somewhere, that somebody has possibly come along and gone, that is like the most awesome thing I've ever seen. Now, it may not be somebody of the stature of Penn or Avedon, but if there's one person who goes, that print that you made is the coolest thing that they've seen, then that's awesome. So keep the perspective, keep yourself brave. Keep plugging away at your photography. Don't listen to the crowds. If it ever gets too much, Remember the story of Eve Arnold and how that she didn't let it overwhelm her and didn't let that crucible of criticism snuff out her passion for photography. To find out what photo school is actually like, click this video here. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.